climax of character development. In the process of developing strong character, which in my own opinion is reaching divine love, we meet various obstacles. The most challenging opponents we will face right before victory are the following. Rejection, betrayal, and our emotions. And only as we learn to meet and overcome these obstacles that we are made perfect in character or love, since I think it's divine love. There is a point beyond which you can never go in character development if you don't learn to control yourself. Your emotions, your words, your appetite, your energy control, your reaction, and so on. And the only way to overcome this issue is to make a decision to stick it out through perseverance. You will never ever arrive if you do not learn to persevere because every time you're getting there you'll give up before you get there what does this mean when you find yourself here in this position you are at the climax of your character development it is at this point where you are about to experience a breakthrough or a hard fall whether you will experience a breakthrough or a hard fall will depend on your will your attitude and knowledge. Will is a decision, attitude is a mental stance, and your knowledge is the information you use to goal keep, defend, or strike. Climax equals crossroad. What does that mean? When you find yourself at the climax of your character development, you will always find yourself at a crossroad. It puts you in an intense position, a position where you have to make a decision between this or that, hot or cold, yes or no, in or out. It is impossible to win this fight with lukewarmness or neutrality. It's either you got it or you don't. Either you master it or you don't. Either you win over rejection, betrayal, and your emotions, or they win over you. In these type of situations, there is always a master and a slave. Both parties have to find themselves in one of these categories, and that is what makes it so intense. This isn't like the Canadian system, <laughs> you know, where you get rewarded for coming in 12th or 74th place. There's only room. <laughs> I know that was an exaggeration, but the point is, there is only room for one winner. Again, that is what makes it so intense. As I just said, whether you will experience a breakthrough or a hard fall will depend on your will, your attitude, and your knowledge. Let us focus on the word breakthrough very briefly because it is a great word to describe the positive outcome of reacting to the climax of your character development if you defeat the three great opponents, rejection, betrayal, and emotions. So what is the meaning of breakthrough? I'm gonna go through five definitions. Four of the five are from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, which is possibly my favorite dictionary because they just have a way of expressing things. And almost always they'll throw like a one word definition and i just really love those and the one that is not from merriam webster dictionary comes from the oxford language dictionary which is typically the definition that pops up when you are looking for a meaning on google so let's start with the oxford language dictionary uh, definition a sudden dramatic and important discovery or development. I really like that because it's true. A breakthrough is sudden, it is dramatic, and it is important. And it's usually when you discover something, okay? The next definitions come from the Merriam-Webster dictionary onwards. So according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, a breakthrough is a sudden advance, especially in knowledge or technique. And I really, really like the word technique. It's a word that really attracted me and caught my eye because how true is that? You know, let me just throw in an example to show how this word technique is so very true when it comes to a breakthrough. 
So here's a very common opponent that many, many people face (laughs) in this day and age, social media addiction. So let's say, which by the way, I also suffered with in my past. Thankfully, I've overcome it and I'm truly happy with that. Thank God. Thank the Lord. (laughs) Literally, it's all him. Um, But anyways, let's say you're at a point where you're sick and tired of being controlled by your impulses for social media. You recognize that every single morning you can't help but to check the different social media platforms even when you don't want to. You can't control it and it's really starting to get on your nerves. So what do people naturally do? What do you naturally do? You go on Google. Okay? And you ask it, why do I keep going on social media even when I don't want to? Then you discover that there are communities, there are groups, there are individuals who suffer with the same thing. You go into these forums, which, by the way, my favorite forum is Reddit. I really shout out to Reddit, okay? Other than my education at home, um, little from school because I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> um, Reddit really taught me some things. But anyway, people throw in their comments their concerns, their observations, and if you're lucky and you've done enough research, you'll have one or more who actually share their methods and how they deal with the issue. And now you find yourself where you want to pr- you want to try it. Now, because we are wired differently, not all methods will work. You're in a position where it's trial and error. You have to experiment. You have to see what works with you. After many, many days or weeks or months or years of practice, you got it. You found the perfect technique for you. It's like sports. You learn a sport. The coach will educate you on the history, the knowledge, the rules, the laws of the sport. They train you in a way where most people train. You have to, of course, master the basics. Once you become more independent, you can take these techniques that you've learned from your coaches and start tweaking it a little bit in your own way and you found your own special technique in some cases you can't have your own technique you actually have to use the old-fashioned way but there are times where you have to make some modifications so it's the same thing i'm going to read that definition again because again i find it so true according to merriam webster dictionary a breakthrough is a sudden advancement especially in knowledge or technique Another definition is an act or instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. So it literally, all that is to say you're moving forward from the obstacle. Now it's behind you. The next definition is an instance of passing through a barrier. Now I know I'm not the only one. I am visual. How I remember, capture, grasp, and understand things is through visuals. I make pictures, images, and, and, and animations in my head, and that's how I catch it, right? If you're visual, think of a wall or a membrane and something just piercing through, being freed from the space that they once were living in, okay? That's what it's saying here. It's an instance of passing through a barrier. Really like that one. And lastly, the one-worded definition by Merriam-Webster dictionary is warfare. I really like that. What is warfare? Warfare is a struggle between competing entities. What is an entity? An entity is an existence. It's a being. It's an inherent mental force or power. Okay? An entity can be anger. It could be depression. It could be hate. It could be resentment. It could be violence. It could be It could be pride. It could be humility. These are mental forces or powers, right? Uh, You know how uh, patience, love, kindness, these are virtues. I'm sure you already know this. Virtue is just another word for power. Results of avoidance. When you block these challenging opponents, you are hindering your growth. You self-handicap. What is self-handicap? I only have one meaning here, and that is... A decision or a strategy by which people avoid effort, conflict, or discomfort 
in hopes of keeping potential failure from hurting their self-esteem or facing the truth. I mentioned earlier that a breakthrough or a hard fall depends on your will, your attitude, and your knowledge. Keep that in mind. Not making a decision is a decision in itself, and it is a bad one. One that always, always ends up in defeat or enslavement. You will be forced to go with one either way. If it doesn't come from you, something will make you do it. Either life will allow you to fall hard, or it will not allow you to get away with avoidance, and you will be forced to face it with your coward attitude, or whatever attitude you have in that very moment, which most people is negative if they're being avoidant, and this is not a good start to a fight. One, there's a will issue. Two, because you're already in this position of avoidance, that is the attitude you're going to start the fight with. And because you're avoidant, you are not doing your job of doing research, getting to know your opponent. So when life puts you in the fighting box and you have no choice to fight, it's against your will, technically. You have this avoidance attitude and you have no technique practiced. So what do you think it's going to happen? You're going to fall hard. So this is the result of avoidance. How should I handle the situation? As mentioned before, there is a point beyond which you can never go in character development if you don't learn to control yourself. Your emotions, words, appetite, energy, control, reaction, and so forth. And the only way to overcome this issue is to make a decision to stick it out through perseverance. That is how you handle the situation. What is perseverance? You will never arrive if you do not learn to persevere because every time you're getting there, you will give up before you get there. So let's look into some meanings of perseverance. I have four here. So according to Oxford Language Dictionary, perseverance is a persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. I like that. According to Merriam-Webster, Perseverance is a continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulty, failure, or opposition. Very similar to the last definition. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, perseverance is a continued effort to do something even when this is difficult or takes a long time. This is really, really good. I really like that one. And the last one, which is a one-worded definition, of course, coming from Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is steadfastness. Steadfastness, what is that? Steadfastness is to be firmly fixed in a place, in belief or adherence. No matter what the conditions are, you're going through it and you're not opting out, you're not moving. That means you are working, you are doing, you are fighting, whether it's sunny outside, whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether there is a storm, whether there is an earthquake, an avalanche, you do not stop. No matter how crazy it is around you, no matter how tiring, no matter how many good excuses you have to give up, you are not stopping. You're persevering. That's what it means. What does perseverance take? Three things. One, the decision to take one step further than the last time, even if it's small. Even if it's small. Even if your progress is by 1%. You are 1% better. You are 1% closer, okay? The second one is setting a reasonable and personal pace. Please be humble. This took me a while. I Listen, this is obviously easier said than done. I used to give this advice to the people I loved and cared for. Hours later, I'm up in people's faces popping off, okay? So <laughs> it obviously takes practice. It's trial and error, trial and error. <laughs> So number two is setting a reasonable pace. Setting a reasonable and personal pace. Be humble. Don't compare yourself to other people. I used to do that all the time, and this is why I could not move forward. You have to stay in your lane. Do not look at other runners. The second you look at other runners is the second you slow down and increase your chances of falling and being disqualified. So please be humble. Consider that not everyone is the same. We are not wired the same. We do not have the same pace. Not everybody starts off at the same starting line. Not everyone has the same advantages, disadvantages, abilities, disabilities, 
right? Thirdly, patience. 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 Learn to stay still. Learn to stay calm. Learn to wait. Learn to stay still. We... It's not entirely our fault because we live in a day and age in a time where patience is completely thrown out the window. We've lost that virtue, that power, because we are adopting new patterns of this world. What is the pattern of this world? Well, everything can be in your hands within 24 hours, in minutes, seconds. You can eat whatever you want, anytime you want. It's called Uber Eats. You're hungry, you don't have to wait an hour and a half for grandma to cook. You could throw something in the microwave. We live in a time where it's more about our emotions. It's more about our feelings. And when we do this, we're allowing the feelings and emotions to dominate us because that's what's driving us. It's not technically our discipline, right? If you want food, you can order it within minutes. You want to adopt a certain style in clothing, you can order that and get it the next day. You feel like dating because you're bored and lonely? Go online. Go order a human being. Just DM them. <laughs> For some, you actually do have to pay. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Okay, right now I'm being a little funny, but all of this is to say that we live in a time that patience, that virtue, that power is no longer being put into practice. When an athlete learns a technique or has a certain gift or power, is going to want to focus on that and work on it how do you become perfect? By repetition. If you are not practicing patience, you will never gain patience. So, so exercise it, you know? If you can, if there are two ways to do something, sometimes choose the longer way. Choose the harder way. It will build your character. Perseverance takes three main things. One, the decision to take one step further than the last time, even if small. Two, setting a reasonable and personal pace, and three, patience. We're going to end the video by just going through a couple methods to exercise self-control. Now that we understand if we want to have a breakthrough when we're at the climax of our character development, self-control is the key. Let's look at some methods on how we can, on how we can cultivate self-control, which is a virtue. It is a power. Number one, fasting. This is the best way to tame your physical, mental, and spiritual body because this is the number one method to humble yourself. Now, I warn you, your senses, taste, sight, smell, touch, and hearing will start a riot. Your emotions will dance around you and beg and entice you to satisfy their needs. You are possessed by these entities and these entities need vessels, which is a human being, to be satisfied. Their request can go from, just take a snack, break your fast, who cares? I want to eat. Or, watch pornography. You're sexually aroused. I know you are. Just do it. Who cares? Just, just satisfy that sexual hunger. Call her or him back and tell them off. They upset you. You're not going to let them talk to you like that, are you? So the idea is really killing the ego. It's killing the I. You know how, I'm sure you've heard it before, you are your greatest enemy? That's what it is. Your memory, your emotions, your reasoning, your consciousness, your imagination, all of this can be used against you. Your job is to quiet down their voices and starve their hunger until they weaken. Some of these emotions or desires will weaken and some may actually die. Meaning, you will end your fast breaking a bad habit, getting rid of an impulse. It is truly about killing the ego. It's killing those impulses. And fasting is not only related to food. You have to fast with social media. You have to fast with people. You have to fast with certain activities or involvements that you're in. Fasting should be done for anything that you give an unreasonable and unbalanced amount of time to. The next method is endurance. This is all about long distance and unpleasant processes. This is inescapable. Choose an activity of your liking 
and set a time you must absolutely respect, no exceptions allowed. Because I am naturally more into sports, I'm going to use something that I am naturally more inclined to do to work my discipline, okay? So I I love sports, but I don't necessarily like running long distances. But because I know that endurance is what I need, the way that I practice endurance is in the physical. Some people practice it mentally. Some people practice it on a spiritual level. You can choose from the three. You can do all three. But the idea is choosing an activity of your liking and set a time you must absolutely respect. So if you are athletic, jog a longer distance that you are not used to. If you are an artist, draw, paint, write, or speak longer than you are used to. If you have to complete your chores, finish them the day of. Do not leave it for tomorrow. If you have to, let's say, mow the lawn, do it in one go. If you have to wash the dishes, you are not done until gunk is scrubbed off your pots and pans. Finish the race you started even if you slow down near the end. The idea is to learn the skill of lasting a long, unpleasant time. Find the activity that works for you. The next method is study and meditate. The beauty of reading is that it indirectly teaches us to slow down our pace, to gather, absorb, and connect information. If you have a weakness, study it. Once you have the information you need, meditate on how you can connect this new information in your personal life. Remember, everyone is different in how they are wired and in their pace. You need to find a creative way to incorporate what you have learned in your everyday today life. Your job is to fit it into your system, fit it into your schedule, fit it in your time, fit it with the weaknesses, the strengths, the disabilities, the the abilities that you have, find a creative formula that works for you. Actually, very quickly, there is a song from a kid's movie that I really like. I'm sure you guys know Mary Poppins. And one of the soundtracks of that movie is called A Spoonful of Sugar. And the beginning goes like this. She starts off by speaking to the kids who seem to be so disorganized. The opponent here is laziness, it's disorder, it's lack of discipline. And she wants to teach these kids how to clean. Before she gets into her beautiful singing, she says to them, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. And then she starts singing, and every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake, a lark, a spree, it's very clear to see. <laughs> I love that movie. But anyways, let's not get distracted. Let's not get distracted. And let's not deviate here. Let's go back to study and meditate. We were talking about how everyone is different and how they're wired and how they have different paces. So you have to find a creative way to incorporate what you've learned in your every day-to-day -day job. I'm going to say it again. Your job is to fit it in your system. Find a creative way to put it in your schedule, to put it in your time, to make it work with how you are. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You have to find the fun and snap the job is a game. I mentioned earlier that I'm an athletic person. I am more inclined to taking part of activities that involve sports. So if I want to better my character, I want to overcome laziness, I want to overcome discipline, uh, sorry, lack of discipline. I want to overcome inconsistency. I'm going to use that element of fun, which is sports, and I'm going to get the job done, which is to overcome these opponents of mine. In military ranks, the common saying is that knowing is half the battle. Study and meditate on your opponents to defeat them. Knowing your opponents, your laws and rights over these opponents will win your case. So study, meditate. The next method to exercise self-control is examine and test. Depending on how you are wired and what your pace is, you may or may not get it the first try. And that's okay because most don't. Because when you start something new, you are a fool at it. You're not an expert. It is a trial and error process. Apply what you studied and meditate on it and examine the results and outcomes. Ask yourself the big questions. Did it work? If it didn't work, is it because I was not honest with myself? 
I didn't give it my best. I was a bit lazy with it. What succeeded and what did not succeed? What triggered my reactions, successes, and failures in this trial? Why do I react like that? Do people in my entourage or household have the same problem? Maybe there's a pattern or a trend here that I have to break. What could have I done better? What is something I noticed that could have helped me get closer to success? What is something that I do not seem to catch, to understand, to grasp, that I have difficulties with? What is the disability that I have that's not making me get it? Do I need to take a step back? Do I need additional research? Do I need to ask someone for help? What does, ask yourself the big questions. Examine and test. The next method to exercise self-control is confession. As you gain more knowledge on how to deal with your opponents, you will gain confidence because you're learning new techniques and moves that work. So what I want to say is right now, before you get into it, because that's what happened to me and I fell on my face, don't let it get to your head. You're still new to it. You're not an expert. So anyways, confessions. There are power in words. Think of military warfare communication. This often holds the keys to victory. Think about it. Exclamation to your opponents is one of the most crucial parts of war. It sets a tone. It compels. It deters. It even domineers. I hope I said that right. When you know your law and confess it, your opponents understand that you are actually aware of your power and rights and they have to back off because it's law. They can't take advantage of you anymore. Confess what is right. If negativity, if depression comes knocking at the door of your mind and tries to convince you, I'm depressed. Uh, I want to kill myself. Confess out of your mouth because words have power and say, I am not depressed. I am not going to suicide. I am happy. I am well. I am healthy. I am perfectly fine. Do not allow no offense. These scientific terminologies that these scientists come up with, do not identify yourself with that. Don't dare put yourself in that category. If a doctor tells you you suffer from this and this and that, okay, acknowledge that there is an issue because healing requires being honest with yourself, but don't stay there. Do something about it. Confess the right things. When you confess the right things, you put it into life. That's how powerful our words are. The next method is respecting your word. This is so important. Words are so powerful. You have to respect your words. Be respectful. Be careful. Respecting your word. Learn to shut your mouth unless it is useful or meaningful. It ties in with the last method, which is confession, because the point is words are so powerful, okay? Say what you mean and mean what you say. Do not have idle or empty words come out of your mouth. Again, there is power in words. There is power in the tongue. Life and death is in the tongue, I'm telling you. Do not use it loosely. Do not use it unwisely. Self-control is about being mindful and intentional. You are, you know what laws you are putting out and confessing out loud so that it is written and then put into action. Do you think a king of a nation, a president of a country, or a mayor, a, a city, can just say anything however they want without thinking? No, because everything that they're putting out in the air has an effect and is going to be written down in the books. Everything, everything you say has a ripple effect in some shape or form, okay? Do not have idle or empty words. Everything you say matters. Self-control is about being mindful and intentional. Here's a good rule that I've come up with for me personally. This is a formula that I use and actually helps me because <laughs> it forces me to keep myself accountable and not blame anyone else but myself. If you say something, you have to meet up to it. For example, if your friend asked you to go out and you answered yes with impulse, you have to go even if you change your mind on the date of your outing. You must not permit yourself to opt out. 
You have to go through with it. This will teach you to be careful and mindful of what comes out of your mouth and not to speak too soon out of impulsivity or emotion, which in most cases dominate us, rule us, possess us, are masters of us. So this happens to me often if I am being prideful in the moment and I tell a group of people, yeah, I'm going to do that. I put it out in the air. Now I have to figure out a way to do it. It really, really, trust me, this one works because there are times where I've impulsively said yes or no, and now I am so upset. Is that smart? And then you realize that what you're doing is not healthy. It's not smart and it affects people. People count on you. There's a responsibility. People hold you to your word. This is also a great way to become a man or a woman of your word. You will gain so much more respect if you hold on and meet your word. Now, last and absolutely not least, method to exercise self-control is develop love for the truth. Without this, you will never succeed. If you deliberately lie or fool yourself, you are not ready for a breakthrough. You're just not. And listen, character development is a constant thing. This is something that starts from the second you are born until the day that you're out of this earthly life. It starts the second you open your eyes until you close your eyes to your subconscious state, which is sleep. Everything you do is part of your character development. Becoming better, becoming the best version of yourself is a lifetime battle. Okay, so there are successful people who still have to overcome things in different areas. Okay, let's say life has a hundred areas for you to master as a human being. Some successful people are at 99. So there's always room for someone to overcome themselves in some way or another. So for example, some people need to overcome maturity. Some people need to overcome their emotions and gain emotional intelligence. Some people need to overcome their fear of marriage. Actually, the three examples that I've just mentioned, I've suffered with. I've overcome two out of the three. I'm just overcoming the idea and 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 daunting <laughs> the dauntingness I hope that's a word of marriage, right? We all have to overcome our doubts, our fears, these negative entities. I, now personally me, I like to get personal because I feel like a lot of people can relate to it, connect with it and um it's just very real. So you can understand that this is this is in everything. It's in everything that you do. Developing love for the truth. Again, without this, you can't succeed. If you are constantly deliberately lying or fooling yourself, you're telling yourself, I'm not afraid, I'm not doubtful, or pulling the avoidant card, you are not ready for a breakthrough. You still want to stay in your current position. I'm sorry. This is what it boils down to. Whether, you know, there's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no in the middle with it. It just means that you want to stay in your current position. And that could be because I'm not ready. I want to stay in my position because I'm afraid. I want to stay in my position because I'm doubtful. I'm afraid to, of what people will think. I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid to be put to shame. You want to stay in that current position because of a something. And usually that something is exactly what you need to overcome. So anyway, Self-control requires self-awareness, okay? And self-awareness <laughs> requires self-honesty. That is, honest, conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, thoughts, motives, desires. You need to be real with yourself. You will never reach your goal if you don't lay out the facts out on the table. It will not matter how many plans you write down, or how many steps you take forward. Not only will your plan fail sooner or later, but you will stay in a paralyzing state until you recognize the truth and accept it. No good work comes out of crookedness. Lies. You want to be a better athlete? You need to lay out your weaknesses. You need to lay out what needs work. Or you're never going to become better. You want to be a better engineer? You got to be honest with your weaknesses. You, you got to expose 
where you're lacking. You want to be a better man? You want to be a better woman, a better father, a better daughter, a better friend, a better coach, a better leader? You have to lay everything on the table. No good work comes out of crookedness. Now, when you have love for the truth, you put your love for it before your own opinions, your own feelings, your own discomfort, and so on. You will always respect it and make it your top priority, meaning you will submit to it whether you like it or not, whether it is hard or not, whether it is attractive or not, whether it is comfortable or not, whether it costs you or not, because you love it. Now, there's so many benefits to exercising this method, the skill of loving the truth. It's so good. Number one. You become honest. When you're honest, you move forward. Number two, you become very understanding. You actually become fair because you can be in situations, you can meet with people who do such bad things to you, who may annoy you, who are so unlikable, so detestable, so unlovable, but you can level it out because you can recognize that you fall short in some areas. It will make, it will actually make it very hard for you to hate people if you love the truth because no one can say that they're perfect. You can't talk. You can't talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the good thing about, there's so many other, of course, there are so many benefits to exercising the love of truth, but trust me, this one is so good because you will always prioritize it. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm lazy. I can't get up early in the morning. I can't complete my task out of the day. If I've written five down for the day, I barely finished one out of the five. And it's a problem. If I'm not honest with myself and I tell myself, yeah, well, it's because I was sick. It's because I didn't feel good. It's because my mom talked to me in a certain way that I didn't like. You're lying to yourself. There's no excuse. There are people who are living off an oxygen tank who wake up at 5 a.m. every single morning and attend work with punctuality. There is no excuse. You're lying to yourself. It's not because your mother was rude to you. It's not because you were sick. It's not because this and that. It's because you are lazy. Now, that's not going to feel good because one, it's hard to admit that we're wrong, weak, and pathetic. And two, because if you take the truth and you accept that as the truth, now you're held accountable. You have to get up now because you accepted the truth. That's why some people rather reject the truth because they would rather stay oblivious. They'd rather stay ignorant. They want to stay ignorant to it because they don't want, they don't love the truth. If you love the truth, even if it's uncomfortable, even if you don't like it, even if it's attractive or not, even if it's costly, costly meaning it could take a lot of your energy. Energy is costly. It could take a lot of your time. Time is money. Even if it is costly, attractive, uncomfortable, you're going to do it because it's the truth. It's, 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 it's the absolute, it's the head, it's the amen. It doesn't matter what you say, feel, what your opinion is, you have to do it because it's true. So exercise loving the truth. This brings us to the end of the video. Just to recap everything we talked about today. The climax of character development is when you are facing really, really hard opponents. This could be rejection, betrayal, emotions, and the only way to overcome it is by mastering self-control. There is a point beyond which you can never go in character development if you don't learn to control yourself. And the only way to overcome this is to make a decision to stick it out through something called perseverance. Without perseverance, you will not be able to make it because every time you're getting there, you will give up before you get there. Now, there are only two outcomes. Either you're going to experience a breakthrough, either you're going to experience a hard fall. Whether you will experience a breakthrough or a hard fall will depend on three things. The will, which is a decision. Your attitude, which is your mental stance, your perspective. And three, your knowledge, which is the information you use to goal keep, defend, or strike. And when we are at the climax of our character development, we always find ourselves in a crossroad. There are only two options. 
You have to make a decision between this or that, hot or cold, yes or no, in or out. There is no lukewarmness. There is no neutrality to this. One is a slave. One is a master. We focused on what a breakthrough is. And a breakthrough is basically a sudden advancement in a technique. It's, it's an instance of passing through a barrier. It's a warfare. A struggle between competing entities, between mental forces. We also talked about the result of avoidance. When you are blocking your opponents, you are hindering your growth and you are practicing self-handicap, which is to avoid certain situations, efforts, conflicts, discomforts, to keep yourself from potential failure or hurting your self-esteem. We also discuss how we can handle the situation, and this can be answered in one word, perseverance. What is perseverance? Perseverance is persistence or continued effort in doing something even when it is difficult or it takes a long time. It's actually another word for steadfastness, which is to stay firmly fixed in a place, a belief, or an adherence, or a decision. We also learned what perseverance takes. Three things. One, the decision to take one step further then the last time, even if small. Two, setting a reasonable and personal space. Three, patience. We then went through some methods to exercise self-control. Since we've learned that self-control is the only key to experience a breakthrough when we've reached the climax of our character development. This is what is going to help us overcome. The methods are the following. Fasting. Endurance. Study and meditate. Examine and test. Confession. Respecting your word. Develop love for the truth. Thank you guys so much for listening. I truly hope you guys gained something from this. I trust that you will leave motivated, inspired, willing to overcome yourselves and really focus on what was said today to learn techniques and formulas and creative ways to help you overcome the opponents that you're facing there are hundreds of thousands of opponents that exist today i've only mentioned the three major ones that come up right before victory those are the strongholds and that is rejection betrayal and emotion we've obviously focused more on emotions because i find that people can relate to it better and understand it better let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please feel free to reach out or comment below. Do whatever you want, okay? All I want for you is to hear this, consider it, and apply it. Connect it in your real life, you know? When you learn something, it's not just to go, oh, okay, that's cool, true, true, true. <laughs> you got a point there, and then go back to your ways. No, it's to apply it in your real life. So, Anyways, have a powerful, productive rest of the day, week, weekend, month, year, life. <laughs> I love you, and I mean that. Bye.